All right, everyone, there's two uh, important things that I want people to uh, briefly look up. Look up muckraking and then look up yellow journalism. Uh, sort of the same era of the, the Tammany Hall sort of stuff that went on uh, in our past, up through especially in the 1800s um, and early 1900s, honestly. Um, such things were fairly common. It isn't like today or a lot of the lamestream stuff, it, it strives to be, it, first and foremost, it wants to be seen as, pre as presentable and, and polite. It wasn't like that. It was more people punching each other in the face over whose candidate was shitty back then. Uh, perhaps there's something to be said for that kind of, uh, of on-the-ground action at times. Of course, generally now it's frowned upon. Um, Mother Jones has come out and now is claiming... According to a bombshell new report, a new Trump scandal, wow, you know, there seem to be an awful lot of them from an awful lot of uh, locations lately. Could it be that they're really getting worried about Trump uh, not getting impeached? wonder if that's possible. Um, saying that, you know, we, uh, in so-called affair with Stormy Daniels, which she denies and he denies, they both say, no, you know, we never slept together, and, and who really cares? Like, the, the, we're, I think, far past the Monica Lewinsky days back when it was considered like the worst thing ever to have premarital sex or to have an affair. Now it's sort of embedded in the culture that, yeah, there are things that are actually worse than that. There are things that are worse than getting your cock sucked. Yeah, indeed. Now, one of the least bad things Clinton ever did was have a consensual affair with Monica Lewinsky. I'm much more worried about the times it was non-consensual or, you know, the whole, the, <laughs> the whole let's go over uh, seas and kill people thing or the let's give uranium to North Korea thing. I think those were more concerning um, than Monica Lewinsky, but that was the one, that's like the, the icon of the Clinton era. For some odd reason, the Gen Xers, when they were young, when they were like teens or in their early 20s or whatever, they thought that stuff was fascinating. Now they're older and they're like, oh, come on. Now they've, they've, got, they've grown a brain. Uh, they no longer care. We lived through like the jackass period and Beavis and Butthead and things. You know, we don't really care as much. And as for millennials, like we were basically raised on weird shit like this, like shock sites and porn and stuff. So it's not going to bother us. And Gen Z, like they're probably even less bothered. I don't even want to know the sort of weird shit they're looking at on a day-to-day -day basis. So Mother Jones says Stormy Daniels spanked him with a copy of Forbes magazine. Like he, he requested that. So people are like, oh, it's so weird and out there. Yeah. Yeah, like the Tumblrites of the left haven't uh, displayed um, their love for every fetish under the sun. You really think getting wanting to be spanked is really out there? What about all the other weird stuff you're into, like fursuits and, and you know, headmates and weird stuff like that? Oh, I'm into psychic astral rape. Oh, yeah, I like to, to wear a butt plug when I go to church and get off in the pew. You know, there are people that are into that stuff, and it's like you're always saying don't judge people... Uh, and then you're judging people. It's sort of like the girtherism stuff, like, oh, fat shaming is evil and you should lose your job if you do it, but we're going to do that to the president because that's, that's somehow different. You know, like you're not being total hypocrites. Then again, though, there's no evidence that this happened. And then Mother Jones uh, separately says, oh, yeah, and Trump apparently really loved Shark Week. Like before it was the Gorilla Channel. Um, somebody made a fake post. I didn't report on this because it was fake and it was already waning in interest by then. Um, the, the joke was that they took a fake passage from his book, like the, like the Fire and Fury book that was written by that one Trump associate. They made up a fake passage and, and pretended that it was part of the book, and it was about how Trump wanted to watch gorillas on TV and kept whining about it uh, and thought that there was a channel called the Gorilla Channel. And this was totally fake. Keep in mind, this was absolutely fabricated. The lamestream media took that fake story and actually ran with it. They actually thought briefly that it was real. Pundits were tweeting it out. And, and, and according to the joke, Trump then was upset that the Gorilla Channel didn't have enough fighting, so they just, like, hashed together a bunch of footage of gorillas fighting each other. And then he would sit there for hours and he would remark upon, you know, which gorilla was, like, was, like, glorious or good. Like, that gorilla is cool because he can throw a good punch. And just really, really one-dimensional bullshit. And the joke is that the same people running with it that thought it was real, that took it seriously, are the same thing, uh, people that would believe a, a media report of the same caliber. It's absolutely f uh, non-factual. It is fake. I am telling you now, I do not believe that Trump is so obsessed with Shark Week 
that he would fuck a porn star having an affair, and then he would say, oh, spank me with Forbes magazine, and by the way, I want you to watch hours of Shark Week with me. Just stay in my hotel room, and we're going to watch Shark Week all day. Are you fucking serious? You expect me to believe for even a moment that this is fucking true? No, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't. Now, fewer and fewer people trust the lamestream media. They seem to think that when they run with weird shit like this, it's going to be taken seriously without a significant amount of evidence. I'm not talking about some years old statements by somebody associated with the matter. No, I'm talking, is Trump himself going to come out and say, yeah, I like being spanked by Forbes magazine because time is trash. That would be funny. And honestly, I'm going to tell you the truth here. If this were all true, let's say it's true. Let's say Trump had an affair, you know, at the time, mid-2000, I think 2006 is when they're talking about, with a porn star. And he's into getting spanked by Forbes magazine because, you know, he's Donald Trump and then wanted to spend hours watching Shark Week. And at the same time, he's, he's like watching Gorilla Channel and all this weird shit. I wouldn't care. It, 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 no, I'm much more concerned with something substantive. Like, I look at what Rex Tillerson said about Syria. We're going to have an open-ended engagement in Syria and where we still insist Assad must go. That concerns me. That concerns me. It affects real people's lives in the here and now in a negative manner, potentially causes a lot of death, potentially worldwide instability, maybe a third world war. Who knows? That affects my life potentially. Trump doing something 10 fucking years ago with a porn star doesn't affect my life in any way, shape, or form. Now, I want to see what is Trump doing specifically now? Why don't you report on what he said, what he did recently? The only time that the media even bothers to do this is when he says something like he did supposedly, and we don't even know this to be the case, about Haiti. Otherwise, if there's nothing they can smear him with that he said in the last week, they default to making up stupid shit like this. I'm telling you, there's a 99% chance this is made up. Let's say that Mother Jones itself didn't make it up. Then I've got to assume that there's somebody in the White House or some idiot who likes to use pay phones who's tipping these places off to the, to the wildest dreams of their sick imagination and they're just sending in anonymous tips and the media, which has come to believe that Trump is the Antichrist and which doesn't like him because he won't give him an interview and scoops them on Twitter, runs with it anyway because they gain plausible deniability. So I could, apparently, I could go to a DC telephone tomorrow. I could go to a DC pay phone, call up CNN, and say, yeah, I've got a hot news tip. Yeah, I'm calling you from a pay phone. I'm not going to tell you who I am, and I'm calling from a pay phone because, you know, I don't want to get fired. I don't want to get harassed or something. Yet yeah, Trump, uh, not only is he the only one who gets two scoops of ice cream, he shoves them up his fucking ass. Then he molests Mike Pence's wife with the cone. And if I were to tell them that, there's a possibility that they would actually say, oh, a source close to the Trump campaign says that Trump likes to rape Mike Pence's wife with an ice cream cone. See how easy it is? Any random Tom, Dick, or Harry, apparently, because they believe any weird story about Trump, they'll run with anything. They can be so easily duped at this point. I wouldn't be surprised if Trump occasionally feeds them bullshit on his own, like he apparently used to do with the New York media from time to time. Hmm, I wonder. Uh, for his own amusement, so he can just watch the news reports sit there laughing at them. I wouldn't be particularly surprised. Here's the difference, though. Muckraking and yellow journalism often appear to be one another. Here's the problem. If you assume that Trump is corrupt, then you think that like the CNNs, MSNBCs and stuff are, are muckraking. They're trying to dig out his past, all the shit that he's done because you consider him a slime ball. And if you assume that he's a slime ball, if you put him into that one dimensional state, all of these other reports begin to make sense because he's irredeemable. He probably does have weird fetishes. He probably does have affairs. He womanizes a lot. He's probably, he's out there. He's a psychopath. He's, he's a horrible person. If you believe that Trump is one dimensional and bad, you probably believe all of these reports. Likewise, if you're like me and you say, hey, one dimensionality is propaganda, invariably, 100% of the time, it will be propaganda. And so you see one dimensionality as, as portrayed through, uh, by Trump through the eyes of the media when they talk about things. If you presume that that, in fact, is actually true, then uh, you get to the point where you realize, hey, this is all bullshit. It's not muckraking. It's not that Trump is being a bad person. It's actually the opposite. It's the legacy media uh, is full of crap. They're projecting on Trump probably their own sick fantasies from time to time. And it's bullshit. It is propaganda. It's, it's not muckraking. It's yellow 
journalism. That is, they're just making stuff up at this point because they don't like him. I can see why they wouldn't like him. Look, he, he won't talk to CNN. He, he throws their reporters out. He scoops them on Twitter. He does other things. They, they're upset at him, and they're losing their audience anyway. There's the reason why. The reason why. They think that he owes them one, that he owes them the hot interview so they can buff up their numbers. That he owes, and if they can't get that, they'll do the next best thing, which is sensationalize, often based on some anonymous tip or somebody who knew Trump 20 years ago. And that's becoming a problem. The problem with these so-called journalistic outlets, which are really corporations, they're businesses, they're for profit like any other. You know, an oil company and CNN are very, very similar because they both have the same fundamental motive. It's just one involves itself with human communication and so-called news, which is mostly just analysis. And it's the same on the other side. Fox does the same thing. Breitbart and Drudge and all these other, they do the same friggin' thing. I'm not saying it's just a left-leaning phenomenon. No, it's they're all corporations. You know, they wouldn't exist at all if they weren't running a profit. And there's nothing particularly wrong with that, but when they trot out stuff like this, you would think, wouldn't they want to show you what the actual evidence is, not just some old, like, 12-year-old email that's not verified or somebody close to somebody else says? He said, she said stuff. It wouldn't hold up in a court. Why should it hold up in the court of public opinion? Uh, it's absolutely mind-numbing at this point, though. And it's mind-numbing, uh, particularly because any sane individual, not, not some, you know, Trump bot, someone who mindlessly supports him 100% of the time, but somebody like myself, who's willing to criticize him on, on uh, token of Tillerson's Syria comments, or bombing that airfield, or his stuff about CIA black sites, or his apparent willingness to sign off on FISA at this point, which i got to talk about in a minute, as someone who can criticize him for things that I think he's doing wrong, I am telling you, I do not believe these reports. I believe them to be propaganda. They're propaganda being used for a largely, not even a political motive, a profit motive by the corporate media because they're afraid of people like myself. They're afraid of people like you. They're afraid of the upstarts of human communication who are half their age and have twice their audience at this point. And they're terrified especially because now Trump is setting a precedent for being a president, uh, a precedent for a president, haha, uh, who will tweet out and scoop them. They're terrified. They're afraid that other politicians will do the same thing. They'll realize that it works. So they want to make it look like it doesn't work and like he's an ass. They want to set uh, overlapping onto that precedent that he's attempting to set. They want to put a layer of he is a bad person, he is racist, he doesn't know what he's doing. That's essentially what it boils down to. I don't believe it for a hot second. That's about all. Peace out.